Bonjour cuties, Cardi here, and I hope you're having a great day today, man. Gamers, today I wanna to start something a little different. I wanna start making some videos targeted towards new or returning players. Uh, maybe this will be in classic Cardi fashion where I make one video and the series completely dies there, or it'll actually live, who really knows, but I feel like I've been putting this off for a while, and so I want to welcome you guys to the new slash returning player experience videos. Today, I wanna to cover how to pick a class. Things that I've learned over the thousands of hours I've spent on Arcasia, and things to help maybe help you choose classes that will suit your playstyle, suit your wallets. But before we jump into it, you guys know the drill. If you like the content, be sure to sub to the channel. If you like the videos, be sure to like them, and check me out on Twitch. If you're hearing my voice right now, I'm already live, so click that link in the description box down below. And lastly, join the community Discord. It's filled with a bunch of incredible gamers, incredible human beings. And so if you're looking for people to hang out with, chat with, and play some video games with, I would highly recommend checking it out. Let's jump into this video, baby. So the goal in this video is to help you choose a class and then actually help you build it. I feel like I've been getting asked the same question of how do you build a character, what do you do, blah, blah, over and over again. And so I'm gonna be touching a bunch of little parts of it, hopefully in a short way, hopefully in a clear way. And I think the best way to start is which class to pick. Now, I get asked often in chat, what is the best class? And there really isn't one. There are classes that are stronger and there's classes that are weaker and it goes by a patch by patch basis and the stronger ones aren't that much stronger than the weaker ones. A lot of times, and this is a perfect example, picking whatever is strong now is fucking stupid because eventually it's gonna get nerfed and other things, or other things will get buffed and that'll become broken. A perfect example of this is Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter for a long time was considered dog shit. However, in the most recent balance patch, it is now the most broken class in the game. It does insane damage. It is very, very, very powerful. And even though Sharpshooter was considered not a very strong class before this patch, there are still Sharpshooter players who fucking pumped. Shout out the homie MorgPyEnjoyer69, the homie Calvin. He is a very good Sharpshooter. He's played Sharpshooter since launch, and he always pumped on the class, even though the class may have not been considered S tier or whatever it is in tier lists. Tier lists in this game don't really make sense. A lot of times, pick what you find fun, and as long as you have hands and you use them, there's a good chance you will perform well. The next thing I want to touch on is building the character, all right? The cost of building a character. Now, you should never play or not play a class based off of its cost, but if you are completely indifferent, there's a bunch of classes or a bunch of specs that you're interested in, this is something that is worth keeping in mind. Building a character can be very expensive or very cheap. Now, this is only going to apply to building a five by three, which is when you have five engravings at level three or any like combination, if you go four by three plus two plus one or whatever it is, when you are building your character into an end game build. When you build a character, there are three main stats that every single class will focus on, crit, spec, and swiftness. Usually you will focus on one of those stats as your main stat, and then you will have a substat usually just on the neck, and, or some classes will go for a 50-50 or whatever it is. The way this works is that specialization is always the most expensive. The most expensive jewelry in the game is specialization, and it's by a long shot. After that, it is swiftness, which is somewhere in the middle, but I'm gonna be honest, most swiftness jewelry is pretty cheap. And then crit is essentially Fion cost. Anything that you buy on crit, if you play a crit spec, uh, a crit main class, whatever it is, you are essentially just paying for fee on cost. It is completely free, it costs nothing. This is important to keep in mind when you are choosing a character, because again, if there's a lot of things you like and you're not sure, picking classes that are a little bit more affordable to build in a five by three, kind of pog, I'm not gonna lie. It's actually a very, very good feeling. Now, one thing that I find is super important to mention about stats, uh, besides just the cost, is that in general, and this is just my opinion, I personally find for a new player, any spec that has a majority of its stats put into swiftness, I personally find will be a lot easier for a new player to learn raids. Now, there is this is a bit of a double-edged sword. High swiftness classes or high swiftness specs tend to have a much higher skill ceiling just because it requires a lot of uptime. But the great thing about Lost Ark is that a lot of the raids are not designed for you to play perfectly. Hell, a lot of them aren't even designed for you to play well. <laughs> Most of them are centered around doing the mechanics. The damage will do itself as long as you like, you know, you, you're comfortable with your class or whatever. You will usually not run into damage checks in regular content. And so having a lot of swiftness is important because swiftness increasing your movement speed, swiftness increasing your attack speed, and swiftness reducing your cooldowns is crucial. When you're moving around faster, 
you're just able to dodge better, right? If you move faster, you dodge better, you are able to get out of mechanics faster. If you have higher attack speed, you are not locked into animations for as long, which again, means that you do your attack, and then the boss does something to hurt you, and you're able to move out faster because your attack animation was short, and then your movement speed was very, very high. On top of that, it also affects your spacebar. Your spacebar is essentially an iframe. It saves you out of a ton of stuff uh, and is super, super, super crucial to either back attacking the boss or just getting out of danger. And swiftness reduces the cooldown of your spacebar. This is why I feel like for new players or hell, even if you're an experienced player, player progging something brand new, I always feel like swiftness classes are fantastic to learn new content because they are so much less punishing to play than any other type of like stated character, any other spec, whatever you wanna call it uh, in the entire game because just movement speed is survivability. Now, this is kind of what prompted me making this video as I realized there was a lot of new players coming to the game who didn't understand how to even start to build their characters. And for this, I will leave you guys to the community guide. This is the artist community guide specifically, and I'm gonna leave a link to it in my description box. But this links to every single other guide in the game for every single class. The way this works, let's say I wanna make a berserker. I click the little berserker icon, and then I click this little link, and it'll take me to a berserker guide. Every single community guide has a link to another community guide. These are crucial. These will tell you how to do literally everything on the class, which card sets to use, where to locate your stats, what to get on the bracelet, which gear sets, engraving, skills, runes for chaos dungeon, for raids, your rotation. It will show you everything. And so I personally feel like it is very, very, very important to have this bookmarked. It is very, very important to always look at this whenever you are playing a brand new class, because at the end of the day, um, I'm gonna be honest, when I play a new class, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Nobody, no matter how long you've played the game, just has an inherent knowledge of where to allocate your skill points or which your rotation is supposed to be, or whatever it is. Having a good foundation is important, and I feel like this is something that a lot of new players do not even know exists because I don't even know where I originally found this. Someone in chat linked it forever ago, and I've just been using it since, and so... I'm gonna be leaving a link in this in my description box and be sure to use this whenever you are playing a new class. Now all this other stuff is all good and well, right? But if you need to actually pick a class to see if you actually like it, there aren't a lot of good ways to do this in Lost Ark. However, one of the best ways, or one of the okay ways, I guess is the better way of saying this, is watching videos. Watch someone else play the class. If you want to watch people play it at a higher level, maybe type in like, uh, you know, class A, like this is Glavier Hell Mode and I found this guy's channel. Uh, this guy is someone who actually have seen their videos before. He's a very, very, very good Glavier. Uh, but if you want to see what the class looks like in the hands of somebody who's probably going to be at least competent in the class, uh, looking up videos of people doing either Inferno Mode or Hell Mode is a good way of watching a higher level player play the class to get an idea of what it'll look like when you're actually playing it. Uh, and you do have other options as well. This is gonna be a little bit more targeted towards people in maybe the mid game, uh, but doing things like Inferno Mode Vaulton or even doing things like Inferno Mode uh, Akades or what, what the hell is our Guardian called here? The, uh, here we go. Uh, Inferno Mode Akades could be a good way of practicing a new class. The reason for this is because you can use the Book of Coordination. What the Book of Coordination allows you to do, it lets you put together a build completely for free. Uh, it lets you choose your stats, your engravings, uh, your gems, your tripods can all be maxed out. And so it allow you to try out a new class in granted a piece of content is gonna be a little bit more challenging, uh, but it'll at least give you an idea of what the class feels like. Now, for something like going into Inferno Mode Vaulton, that'll be a little bit more challenging. Inferno Mode Akites, is free. This is a very, very easy boss. Uh, you can go in knowing almost nothing, in my opinion, and you're probably going to have a good time. Uh, if you find three other people, maybe you have three other friends who also want to try out some new classes, this could be a good way of just trying out a class in its full engraving setup with its actual full relic tier set on, so you could see if you like the class or not. Uh, something like Inferno Mode Vaulton, again, like I said, is going to be a little more challenging, and this is something that I would suggest progging on a main character first. But once you learn the mechanics, having a new class that you want to see if you like, bring it into Inferno mode, and you can at least get a small feeling to see if you like it before you push it past 1445. Again, 1445 for a brand, brand, brand new player might seem like a lot, but with the honing buffs and stuff, it is super easy to get there. And if you end up not liking the class, abandoning that character at that level and just turning it into like a low pank slave or whatever it is, uh, isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world because it's not really a hard place to get to because of how you know much easier honing is now. Cuties, the final tip or I guess final two tips. 
don't be afraid to shoot the character. If you really fucking hate a character, do not keep it in the roster, no matter how high level you think it is. I promise you, if you're new or returning, there's a good chance that character is not 1560 or 1600 or something. It will You will get that character back, another character up very, very, very fast. And it is not worth keeping a character you do not like in your roster because you need to do a lot of repetitive content on that class. And lastly, 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 check out both specs. No matter how unpopular, no matter how much people shit on another spec of a class, always try both specs. I've tried both specs of every of all the classes in my main roster. A lot of classes where I was like, nah, I'm not gonna like it, and I ended up loving it. Always try out both specs of a class because you never know which one will actually end up hitting for you, no matter how unpopular it might seem, no matter how many people might not like it, who cares? You might be different, you might like it. Always give both specs a shot. And with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you, cuties, for watching today's video. As always, if you enjoy the content, be sure to sub the channel, like the videos if you like them. Check me out on Twitch because you, yes, you, are under legal obligation to come stream and say, hey, Cody, why is it when I order a peanut buster parfait, sometimes the fudge is hot, but other times the fudge is cold? Who wants lukewarm fudge on their ice cream? I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for taking some time to hang out with me. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Lie lie.